Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. So the NFT market has been quite boring. While we did get a slight recovery after last week's crash, nothing new is really happening. And it's getting pretty tiring even for me to make videos talking about the same projects over and over. Now that being said, today we are going to talk about Ether and Meme Land, as well as some opportunities I'm personally going to be taking. So let's get into that. As usual, I am not a financial advisor. It's just my opinion, not financial advice. And if you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? And if you could hit that like button, it's absolutely free and it helps my socials out tremendously. So to no one's shock, Ether failed their mint, which is unfortunate. I really like the art. I've spoken to the team plenty of times, but when your secondary floor price is sitting at your mint price, there is absolutely no way you're going to sell 3,500 NFTs with no upside to the buyers. Now, if we take a look on Blur, they went down to like 0.47. However, they do seem to be having this V-shaped recovery. And this is based purely on speculation because they have not made, at least not that I'm aware, of any official announcement on what their plans are. And the public sale is currently paused, but people are speculating that the team is gonna do an airdrop, ideally one per NFT and not one per wallet, as well as reduce the mint price. People are thinking down to 0.35, which would be their whitelist mint price. Now, I don't mind this idea. They've already reduced their supply from 10,000 down to 5,555, meaning there's a lot less NFTs to go around and they've reduced their community size by almost 50%. So you don't wanna just close the mint here at 2,000 you want to be able to have a bigger community. The problem is if you're airdropping these NFTs, it's just going to be the same holders who now have more NFTs. Ideally, they're going to be staked for like 10 weeks or whatever the timeline is for the free whitelist mint. But the other question I have is what happens to their roadmap now? Because they were supposed to raise something like $10 million and now they've raised 1.6. If they airdrop 2,000 NFTs, there's only like 1,200 left, meaning they're going to raise another 800,000 to roughly 1 million, which is a ton of money. But with the amount that they've spent on the trailers, all the money they've invested over the past two years. I'm wondering what happens with the funds and how do they deliver on the original roadmap. Next up for Meme Land, we did finally get some details around the pre-sale allocation based on the assets that you hold. So the way they're doing this is via allow list spots. One spot is worth 0.69 Ethereum. And if you have a human captain, you get one spot. If you have special types, you get multiple spots. And if you own an MVP, you get 12 spots. So 12 times 0.69. Now they also mentioned here, the waitlist allocation as well as potatoes is going to be one waitlist spot. So they're pretty much going to be dealing with whatever is left. And I did find it funny. They have a really important part that they forgot to include. So they included it after, which I think a lot of people do tend to forget. And that is all holders of MVPs, of potatoes, and of captains are going to be eligible to get the meme coin airdrop. As for the captain's floor, it did slightly go down with the news. I don't think it was related to the news at all. But what triggers me is we still have have this staking issue where staked NFTs can be listed, but they can't be sold for up to three hours. Now, at least with the art reveal, you can tell which assets are staked and which ones aren't because you have the babies, which are unstaked and the adults, which are still staked. But if you look at this person, they're either trying to manipulate the floor or they just like lack intelligence because they've listed five at the same price and they're all staked, so they can't be sold. So hopefully we do get a fix for this one day because it's really easy for people to kill the floor when the assets can be bought and people who aren't aware of this think the floor is going down and they just undercut these captains. Now, Potatoes, on the other hand, did see a nice recovery in their price. Here you see a big pump and they've dumped a little, but not too much. They're still sitting at 1.7. And I assume this has to do with the extra allocation that you're gonna get for having a full crew and not anything to do with the waitlist spot for owning a potato. I don't think people are out here spending up to two ETH for a shot at getting waitlist. I personally, think it has to do with the full crew benefits. Other than that, there really aren't too many projects upcoming on ETH that I'm excited about. There still is Garbage Friends who keep releasing these low supply collections that are performing pretty well. They just did a mystery drop, which sold out in one minute. The mint price for this was 0.35 and it's currently sitting at 0.85 ETH. And they also have their Ooze Friends collection, which is at like 0.65. So these are holding reasonably well. And their Garbage Friends mint is coming up next week on July 17th. As for Polygon NFTs, we did 
see the mint of the nine project. And while it did manage to sell out, sales were pretty flat as it's currently sitting at mint price. So no upside for buyers, but at least you're not down bad. So all eyes are going to be on Pluto, which is going to be minting this week. I do feel like it's really important for Polygon that this project performs well. And I'm definitely rooting for them to be able to stand out, especially in this market. Now we did manage to get spots for this project in Gorilla Labs, for which I will have some openings in the near future. I always get pinged when you're opening the group up. And to be clear, this is a paid group. So if you want to join, I'm going to put a link to the waitlist down below. I suggest you fill it up properly and not just two word answers because I do read every single application. Now I'm also personally getting quite a few spots for Pluto due to my holdings in the magic batch as every holder is getting up to two airdrops and one whitelist and I own multiple passes. Now there's going to be a ton happening in the near future for magic batch. It really seems like they are ramping things up. I'll be covering all this in future videos. It's very exciting stuff and you can still sign up on their website to try to get whitelisted for it. But as I've mentioned in the future, it's very difficult to get and they are looking for a certain type of person. Now outside of NFTs, I do want to venture into different types of content, especially more towards crypto. After all, I am the crypto gorilla. However, I will be doing a ton of airdrop tutorials because I feel like whenever we have an airdrop, everybody's farming them for two weeks and then people just forget and they stop farming them. And then when the next big drop happens and everybody's getting like a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand dollars per wallet, everybody regrets that they didn't grind them and they fumble the next one for about two weeks until they forget it again and the cycle just repeats itself. So if you want to get a head start before I even release the videos, the ones I'm going to be doing first are most likely going to be layer zero and Z sync but I think it's a good idea to be putting time into this and even for me it's going to help me branch out and grow my audience beyond nfts especially during these times when nfts just aren't performing like they did in the bull now speaking of airdrops we did just get this announcement for the do name mint which is going to be happening tonight and this is going to have a ton of benefits if you like trading on their platform so the only way to qualify for the do airdrop is going to be by owning one of these do names and there is a strategy to maximize your rewards you're going to want to own the shortest name possible which is two letters as well as a good letter combo so if we quickly look at all their benefits, holders are going to get a boost for the token airdrop. They're going to get early access to new features. They're going to get whitelist for a future free do NFT. You're going to get voting rights for their launchpad, but the two features I love the most are going to be the revenue sharing for their launchpad, as well as the continuous trading yields. Now these trading yields work in a special way. Essentially 45% of every do name minted, as well as the royalties on the secondary market are going to go to the previous holders. So you're going to want to mint these as soon as possible. I've personally already reserved some. Again, if I could chill Magic Batch, Magic Batch each got a free two letter name. So I'm going to be getting multiple of these. We also managed to get some spots for this for free in the Gorilla Labs. But on top of the 45%, the other 45% that holders are going to be receiving are based on the length of your name. So like I said, the shorter, the better, but also the word combo that you have. Essentially, like they explain, if you have very short letters and people are minting words that contain the letters that you have, let's say for example, you own the word app and somebody mints apple.do, you're gonna get paid off of their mint because the word app is inside Apple. So as you can see, if you pick a popular two or three letter combo, every time a word is minted with that combo, you're gonna get rewards. So obviously a lot of the rewards depend on how many people are minting these names and how many people are going to be using the do platform to trade polygon nfts so if polygon nfts do continue to grow in popularity as does this platform this could be very beneficial for holders now there is another airdrop that was just announced that is actually making a lot of people quite upset and that is going to be the arkham intelligence airdrop now the tool itself is pretty cool you just put in a wallet and it shows you every single i just put in a random wallet by the way it shows you every single single address that this wallet has ever interacted with. So if it stops opening, I'm just going to click a random one again. You're going to see, I can see every single person that this wallet has ever interacted with. So I think this is a really cool tool, but people are really upset because they're encouraging people to dox.
box others, and then they're making money selling your data. So we could see in this tweet, you can buy and sell information on the owner of any blockchain wallet address <laughs> anonymously, how ironic. And basically, if you want data on something, you could set a bounty and somebody can go sniff out that data and then earn a reward for completing your quest, let's call it. Now, while this is great for stopping scammers and for people like Zach XBT who already do this for a living, it also goes against what a lot of people in crypto stand for, which is privacy. Now, all that aside, if you did sign up prior to the 8th, there was a snapshot on the 8th and the airdrop is happening soon on July 18th. So I have no idea if this is gonna be worth anything. Similar to the Do airdrop, I don't know how much the Do tokens are gonna be worth, but I personally think it's good to try to get every single airdrop. Again, if this goes against your morals of selling data, then obviously you have no obligation to sign up. But I do find it kind of ironic. A lot of people are speaking out against this product. However, just a week ago, everyone was sharing their Threads username. Threads, of course, being the new app from Mark Zuckerberg out of Meta, and they've been selling your data essentially without your permission for years. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla. Peace.